Welcome to the Harvest Festival and to the first inaugural um, neighbor presentation in our brand new mountain living strategy adventure where we are uh, excited to be inviting mountain neighbors to come speak about what they know about living up here because there, it, there, there's a lot to know and there's a lot of wise folks up here. So we're starting off the day with Robin Porter of the Loma Prieta Community Foundation, who's been involved in community service for a very long time and involved in the Community Foundation for a long time. And she is going to speak about her, uh, at her research that she's pulled together about all the community organizations up here. So thanks very much for joining us, Robin. So first, I want to say thank you for John Leopold showing up. This is great. And he's our county supervisor for this area. Um, it's a little weird because John's probably back there going, ha ha, I'm back here now. <laughs> so that's a there you go, just five pages. Um, also, after my talk, I think on the hour, there's going to be a talk. Uh, Larry McBoy's giving a talk on chickens. And uh, what? Uh, right, and then there's another talk on um, on um, yeah birds and then indigenous plants. So that's kind of cool. So I went trumping. I thought that I knew all the community um, organizations up here, and I was wrong. And so I've been trying to put together a comprehensive list. If the list is not complete, please let me know afterwards because I'd love to put more stuff up here. Um, I wanted to start this out by saying my daughter came home in kindergarten and her backpack was full of papers, all the crap that the schools you know, put in their, in their um, backpacks. But she had one thing in her hot little hand. And that one thing in her hot little hand was how to sign up for being a brownie. She wanted more than life itself to be a Girl Scout. And so I was, I was good with that. I was going to take her. I went to the gym, and all the other moms and all the other little girls were all sitting there, and life was good. And the, the Girl Scout Association, all the leaders came, and they gave a great video, and were like, yay, go Girl Scouts. And then they said, okay, who's going to be the leader? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, you guys are. You're paid. You're Girl Scouts. You know? And they're like, no, you have 200 girls, little girls in here all begging to be a Girl Scout. And, and you have to decide amongst yourself who's going to be the Girl Scout leader. And, and I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. We don't, we, we're moms. We don't do this. And, <laughs> and, and, and finally they said, okay, nobody wants to step up. That's it. And they packed up their crap and left. And there was no Girl Scouts, at which point all the girls started bawling, right? You know, the, it's like having a puppy thing, right? You just, oh, my God. And so I go walking up, you know, and they're, they're like fresh meat at 12 o'clock. Here comes the mom. And, and I said, okay, what's it take? I've never done this before. And they said, we're there. We have a book. We have, we have training. We have stuff like that. We'll help you through this process. And that, belong, that began my 12-year Girl Scout brownie adventure. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that Every one of these programs, I, the takeaway from this is I don't want you to take away, yeah, that's nice, that's really cool what they do. I want you to take in your mind what would happen if this organization was no longer here. Because in going through this, what I found, and, and I'm seeing it right here, not to, you know, we're all old. And organizations... <laughs> You know, and, <laughs> and, 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 and we have a pastor here that's done more than his fair share of the upside of life and the downside of life, right? And, and a lot of these things will directly impact our lives if they disappear. And, and it really started to concern me the more I started going through this, the number as I talked to the leaders of each one of these organizations, well, gee, how many, how many did you have after the Loma Prieta earthquake? And how many do you have now? And, you know, what are the demographics? And it's a little scary. So anyway, um, the first is I wanted to talk about the Loma Prieta Community Foundation. It's a 501c3. There's people, that guy, 
that make sure that we don't misspend the money. And we handle the Lumber Prieta community. Um, we have a board of directors, it's 11 or so. We have open meetings, you're welcome to attend. Um, and we could always use more members. It was founded in 1983, and it's to provide community support. So the foundation raised a million seven to build this community center. Not, an, not a small task. And then it was built for joint use. Here's the Loma School, and here's CT English. And it was built to be the gym between those two things. So when you have a gym, you can think of all the school uses for a gym, but what you don't think about is, is all the other things that could be used for this. And so through the years, we've maintained this gym and, and the joint use between the school districts and ourselves. And we've done some upgrades, putting in a Red Cross kitchen and emergency generators. And in 2010, we resurfaced the gym floor. So we've been keeping it up till those kids burned it down. So, um, so what? This, do not read this whole slide. It's just saying, oh my God, we have, we have been able to do some significant big money projects. We, we built the summit pathway all along summit that people use every day. We put in the emergency generator. We put in a garden terrace. We put restrooms on the gazebo field. Um, we've been able to do a lot of things in and around the, the whole building. So the first thing that happens when you build a building and you start picturing what you can do with it other than the, than the school uses, you see yoga mats. So, so uh, with the County of Santa Cruz, thank you, John, and with the Los Gatos Rec, we run several programs up here for all the mountain residents. We run yoga, Pilates, belly dancing. You should come up for that. And then soccer clinics, the 55 and older program. You could, you could, it's a twofer now. And then midlife uh, fitness, the whole mountain soccer league. And what's really cool about this, in working with Los Gatos Rec and Santa Cruz County Parks, what we're able to do is anytime you get like five or more people together to make a class or an activity, we can run that through the community foundation. So as these needs change and grow, we can, we can help with that. Um, we also run the Building Blocks Preschool. That for many years was run um, through the Los Gatos Rec. And we've actually taken over the preschool. And we, the Community Foundation, have two full-time employees. And we run the, the preschool program for the entire mountain. It's right across the street from the school. One of the things that's been really awesome about having that program across from the school is that the school district is able to do early intervention. So they have a child that comes into the preschool at two years old, and they're able to send resources over to help this child so that by the time the kid gets in their, their kindergarten, that they've, they've had a lot more success with the early intervention. Um, they host a new mom's club. You don't even have to be part of the Building Blocks preschool. They come once a month, and so there's all kinds of kids that come for that. We run a scholarship program. Uh, one of the victims of the Gilroy shooting is under our scholarship right now, uh, the, the little boy. Um, and then they do fundraising. They have pasta and pizza dinners right here at the church. So thank you for hosting that. Um, in addition, anytime you build a gym with a stage, you can't stop those thespians. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looking at you, Kevin. Um, so the Theater in the Mountains, see an opportunity to bridge its back there. Um, there's an opportunity to put on some world-class um, performances. So this season, upcoming, we have Annie and Junior, the Adams Family, and Pirates the Musical. So feel free to come up and support Theater in the Mountains. We also have our ninth um, summer movie series. We host movies at the gazebo in a, with a big screen TV, a big screen. It's like way bigger, right? And, and it's all free. The whole idea is just come out and be with each other. And this summer, we've done this for nine years. This summer, we did Spider-Man. We did Mamma Mia, the sing-along version. We did Free Solo, the climbing movie, and Captain Marvel. The movie's free, and we charge a buck for popcorn. I mean, try that in the real world. Um, so the minute you put a parking lot outside of a building, what you end up with is... 95033, our Go Green movement, which is also under the Community Foundation. Uh-oh. 
Um, anyway, they have a parking lot, and once a quarter, they encourage all mountain residents to bring all their stuff. And, and you drive in with all your stuff, and you put it in, the, in, the, in a parking space that's given to you, and you leave it. And people come and go from the community, and it, it's all free. It's, you just say, oh, wow, I love that, and you walk away with it. And then what happens is across the street, the Home and School Club runs a Goodwill donation program. So anything that's left over at the end of that, you just walk it across the street, give it to go Goodwill, and the Home and School Club gets money for it. So that's kind of pretty cool. The Go Green movement also did something kind of cool. They eliminated all paper in the school. Not all paper, because there's obviously homework. But it used to be you got a Wednesday packet. It was up to 12, uh, 12 to 20 sheets. And now that's all gone. Uh, there were zero waste lunches before we had a lunch program. Um, they also have 950333. It's over a thousand community members. And all you need to know is four words. Wanted, received, offered, and taken. And you go, I need a freezer. And somebody goes, I've got one of those. And you go and pick it up for free. It's amazing. You say, I have this, this old, old washing machine. You pick it up for free. You say, I need a bike. I need kids' clothes. I need a chicken. I need a toolbox. I need, I want, I have. You can, you can free cycle it. Right, pretty cool. Even things like, you know, I need binders for my kid to start school, or I need size four boys' clothes, right? It's for everything. So the, the function of the emergency, of, of the Loma Prieta Community Foundation is also about emergencies and needs. So say when the Loma Prieta fire came through, we got community donations, and we were able to put that under the 501c3. And then that got funneled, with no money taken out, by the way, um, to the Loma fire victims. And Sanjay and George worked with the community in the Loma uh, fire area, and they developed, for lack of a better term, a point system to determine how much got dispersed to each family in the whole area. And then we took care of dispersing the funds to them, and then they gave it to the community. Um, potholes, when the county can't keep up, there's always pothole vigilantes. <laughs> John's cringing back there. Um, so yeah. we have community <laughs> we, we have community donations coming in and those go straight to the pothole vigilantes. We needed desperately needed a new fire water tender and and with that community donations came in and that was like three hundred thousand dollars or something. George, what was it? You know. Okay, so somewhere between three hundred fifty and four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we manage those funds, and then various groups, the the Celtics Men's Choir, right? They raise money for what they do, and that comes in and it goes out to their group. So we hold money so that we make sure it doesn't, you know, get misspent. I guess is a good way to put it. So, why do we need things for emergencies? This is the Loma Prieta earthquake. Um, some things were really amazing when I started looking at this. For those of you that are younger and don't know what the earthquake was, that's a freeway that collapsed upon itself. And this is San Francisco. This is a picture of San Francisco. That's pretty sobering. This is Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz had to be, uh, downtown was devastated, just devastated. Um, another thing I'd never understood, this is a map of all the gas mains that broke during the Loma Prieta earthquake. And so they had just, the whole marina district was on fire. And this fire, fire um, boat, it's called the Phoenix, it pumped 10,000 gallons of water per minute for days. And they hooked them up to the, um, all the, the pipe, all the, the hoses, and they, they built a hose network through the marina system, and they could fight multiple fires with those two fire boats pumping nothing but water from the bay. It was pretty amazing. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool that um, you know, they, they had such good response. So you look at all the fire workers and the first responders were here, and they were in Oakland, and they were down in Santa Cruz. And the bad news about this is that there was nobody left up here. And then you look at, 
at what happened, you know, the red is the worst part. And we were in the middle of the red part with no help. And we desperately needed help. Just the sheer number of mountain homes that were just, you know, everything was toppled. There was no gas. There was no cell phones. There were no restaurants open. There was no power, nothing. And we were basically helpless up here. So if that's too old for you and you don't remember that, we had the Loma fire. And that was September 26th. This, I love this picture. That's the boardwalk, and that's the fire up on the far mountains, right? I mean, that's pretty. Uh -huh. um, so anyway, fire's bad. So the first thing that happened is the ham radio club pipes in. The ham radio club actually came out of the Loma Prieta earthquake. Because there were no communications, some local hams said, oh my gosh, we need to start talking amongst ourselves. And so the, the Ham Radio Club meets at Burrell School at the Cal Fire Station the first Thursday of every month. They charge 20 bucks for the training, and it's easy to get your license. All this stuff's on, online, and you can get it. And most of the firemen take this class as well. Um, then they also have drills and tests, and they, they like to have people pretend they have dead bodies, and they go out and run, run alerts. The Amateur Radio Emergency Services is part of the Civil civil Defense, I think it's a more nationwide organization, and they have an an, uh, annual countywide communication ex exercise, and that's coming up September 28th. So, so this is the local, and then they're all part of the Aries. So then Merck came along, and so we built this gym, and you have all these people that are now displaced, whether it's from the Loma Fire or from from uh, the Loma Prieta earthquake, and they all said, let's go to the gym. And nobody had the keys. And how long can you eat basketballs, right? I mean, it's just like no good. So what, what happened was the Santa Cruz uh, Mountains, it straddled two Red Cross districts, San Jose and, and Santa Cruz, and the Santa Cruz cha or San Jose chapter came up, and they held classes up here, and they trained people, and they placed arcs. And these arcs are full of equipment. They're full of, you know, food and water and beds and all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, there's three major ARC places. There's one, the Loma Prieta Community Center Gym, and that has the Red Cross upgraded kitchen. There's a Redwood Estates Pavilion, and there's Lakeside Elementary. And these supplies, this team has to be ready at all times to open up the ARCs, to, to set them all up, and to, they go through training exercises, and also to replenish, because... You don't want to eat 30-year-old trail mix, right? And so they keep these up to date, and they've taken all the Red Cross training classes. They meet monthly, not in the summer, and contact George right there for information about the MERT program. By the way, you have to know that the, uh, that art is in paint. <laughs> it's got a new paint job. <laughs> so, so think about what would happen if that's not there. And, and, and the team, George told me the team used to be 40 people. And it's down to like 10 now, right? And what would happen if that, that went away? Nobody could open up the gym and nobody could set all this up and get it up and running. So anyway, I'm... I'm on disasters. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had a good enough disaster. Okay. So the next is something I'm, I'm really concerned about uh, is the Loma Prieta Volunteer Fire and Rescue. So... They had on their website, I cracked up, it's been 104 days since the 56th annual firefighters fundraising barbecue. So that's pretty cool. They're old. They were formed in 1962, and in 1970s, the CDF came under contract with the Santa Cruz County Fire, and now they're part of that system. They always have around 20 members, but they're looking for more, and the training doesn't cost anything. They speak at the local schools, and they also support local events with first aid coverage. 70% of these guys are EMTs, 50% are driver operators, you know, class B, those kind of licenses, and 50%, uh, sorry, and many of them are ham radio operators. They have a 25 square mile area, three to 400 calls per year, and they respond and train with all the other fire departments in a mutual response area. All the fire guys work together. Oh, and by the way, that's a picture of our community center burning down. Just so you know. Um, the Fire Safe Council, I wish Patty was here right now. Um, 
They're a nonprofit funded by multiple public and private sources, and they have several programs up here. They have fuel reduction, they have a neighborhood shipping program, they have the Highway 17 fuel reduction program. They're going to swap on both sides of Highway 17. It's going to be a massive construction project, and they're just going to clear the whole highway both sides. And one thing that you might not know is along Summit, um, Loma Prieta Winery, then there's a lot, then there's Munn's Vineyard, there's our vineyards, there's an orchard, and then more vineyards and more orchards. And they found out in the Santa Rosa fire that those are natural fire breaks because uh, that vineyards have very little fuel and they have water readily available and they have roads going around the perimeter. And so in the Sonoma file, fire, they saw many houses burned and wineries burned and the vineyards were just fine right next to them. And so Patty got the funding, Patty and others, got funding and a grant and they have a program manager and they're going to now cut a swath to, to link a fire break to link all these vineyards going across the ridge because one of our natural uh, fire starters is, is coming, all the hot water coming from the hot air, coming from the Central Valley across Lexington Reservoir up and over the crest and coming down because that's where the heated air comes from is the Central Valley. And so by doing a fire break along the summit, that would be pretty cool. Um, and they, they have started a FireWise certification program. So Chimiquita Park, got Firewise, uh, Redwood Estates got Firewise certified, there's Summit Woods is going after it or in the middle of doing it, and, and so the bill is looking at doing it. So as there are neighborhood associations to work with the Fire Safe Council, we're starting to put together neighborhood plans to link all these people together and to get certified. Um, sir, this is the slat saddest slide up here, because after the, Roma, the Loma Prieta earthquake, there was a movement funded by the fire agencies and the police, and they went around and taught preparedness all, all through the mountains, and they trained people, and they got Red Cross certified, they got everything, and now they are no more. They're, they ran out of volunteers. They all, they all retired. Ran out of leaders. Ran, yeah, ran out. Leaders. Yeah. Um, large animal, there's uh, the Summit Riders, and they're having their fall play day October 20th coming up. But there's also the Santa Cruz uh, um, large animal evacuation and the Santa Clara County large animal evacuation. So both of those are in case of emergency. There's the Santa Cruz, there's the Santa Cruz Alliance, Mountain Alliance. And they were created to support community development on important issues that face us today. They have over a thousand members on their email list. Um, they're currently putting the Fire Safe Roads project is underway, and they're working with Skyland Church and LPCF. Uh, they have a big project with the Soquel demonstration for us to improve management and access. Um, Larry, contact Larry Lop right there. Um, and they gave a Summit Ridge Community Roads report. So they also did a water program up here because several homes were without water and they managed to help and solve that problem for like 50 to 70 people. It was pretty cool. So the Loma Prieta Club was established in 1905. It's 45 mountain women and their outreach, they, they have a fundraiser once a year, the spring picnic. And they do projects for the local schools. They support theater in the mountains, the volunteer fire department. They help local needy families and neighbors, mountain neighbors helping neighbors. Um, they have two scholarships for mountain students. Um, they have a recognition program for youth volunteers. And they co-sponsor uh, the Mountain Voter Information Night. So when you're campaigning to run again, they will, they will sponsor a, a voter information night. Just helpful hints. Um, so anyway, that's Loma Prieta Club. Mountain Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Um, it's a group of volunteers that just help our, mostly our seniors. <coughs> stacking firewood, visiting, giving them rides into town, delivering meals, doing temporary uh, light housekeeping, filling out forms is a problem, especially sometimes forms can be really daunting. Uh, trash cleanup, repairs, and assistance using the internet. And so contact Patricia, she's the lady. Um, LPEF. That's our Loma Prieta Educational Foundation. It's, it's a 501c3. The government pays for classroom with teachers. 
and that's a good idea. But who thought you'd have to pay extra for libraries? And so we have um, a fundraising effort with all the parents in the community to, to say, okay, let's do that. And developmental PE, instead of the teachers taking the kids out every day and saying, run your laps, we actually have a real PE teacher, which is kind of handy. Um, if we raise a little more, we get things like elective options in the eighth grade. And let me tell you why that's really important. There was no geometry in the eighth grade at CT English. Well, if you back it up, if you're a geek, you pretty much, to get into college, have to have calculus your senior year. And you start backing that up. Well, before that, you have to have trig. And you start backing that up, you got algebra two. Before that, you got algebra one. And somewhere in there, you better have geometry. And, and there's no way to take calculus in high school if you haven't had geometry in the eighth grade. And we didn't offer it. So already the kids up here were at a disadvantage because they didn't have those elective options. So now if we, if we raise enough money, we can offer a math teacher to do those kind of things. Um, also, uh, if you're gonna do geometry by the eighth grade, you better give the prerequisites in the sixth and seventh grade. And then also a music program, K to five. And then um, inclusive art in action, all, all kinds of enrichment programs. And so this is our fundraising that we try to do every year. And the team of parents up here for, for almost, it's been almost a decade, they got to where they were raising 450,000 a year to do this. And last year it dropped to 200,000. So this program, if you want to back it down, maybe it covers that, right? So, so just keeping those fundraising efforts in, in first place are important. Um, this is where all their money came, comes from. The biggest one coming up is the gala, and that's coming up October 5th, so make sure you make an effort to put out the word and get as many people to buy tickets to the gala as possible, because it really does fund these programs. What? Okay, I want this done. We have the home and school clubs, they have the dances, the, the movie nights, uh, all those kind of things. Then we have neighborhood associations, so make sure yours are active, especially in the Firewise uh, programs. There we go. We have branch organizations. We have the Leos up here, and they're a very active cha uh, chapter of the Lions Club, and they've done lots of different projects, and they're up for more. And we also have Boy Scout PAC 509. Uh, we have our churches. We have Christ Child Church, and we have the LDS Church, and Mountain Bible Church and Skyland Church with all their outreach, and you're more than welcome to help them with all of these outreach programs and their non-denominational outreaches. So you can help in, in many ways like that. Um, just a, a plug, we have 200 vineyards uh, producing over 4,000 tons of grapes up here. And so we have organizations that are run by volunteers for education up here because we have you know, 200 farmers that are up here. And so we have online groups, 95033 Talk, Chat, Food, Free, Market, Next Door Neighbor. And then this is, this is the final slide. Please help. Look at a map of your area. The biggest thing is how would you evacuate? That's one. What can you do to understand firewise and resilient efforts going up here? We need to define our neighborhood areas. We need access roads. We need to assess the fire danger. We need to, divine, to define evacuation routes. We need to lobby Mr. Leopold on roads and fire. We need to train with our neighbors. We need to staff teams of responders because our, our CERT, our Mercs, all these things are, are getting old and if they fool around with any logs much longer could die. Um, and then um, and we need to hurt the earth less, and uh, we need to make our schools better. We need to eat together, sing and dance together, and raise our children together because we are the Santa Cruz Mountains community.